Hi, my name is Ben Casey from Ableton, uh, and I'm here at Sweetwater today to show you just a few of the new features that we've announced in Ableton Live 10. Now, Live 10 is in beta right now, and there's so much in this update that I can't possibly cover in one video, but I'd just like to dive into a couple of the things that I think are really exciting in Live 10. Here's the Live 10 user interface. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is we've added this concept of collections to the browser. Collections can hold anything in your browser, and you can use them to really pull together all of your favorite sounds, samples, presets, plugins, and projects, and have them all in one place. It's super simple for me to add things to a collection. If there's a sound or a sample that I like, all I have to do is open up the contextual menu and select it right here from the drop-down, and that will instantly be added to my collection. Now, I'm going to come over to this collection, and I'm just going to grab one of the new drum racks that we've released along with Live 10. And I want to talk about a new feature in Live 10 called Capture. With Capture, we decided we would rethink the way people can record their MIDI in Live 10. And it allows you to save performances even if you weren't recording at the time that you played that idea. Let's check that out. So I've loaded this drum kit up. What I would do next is maybe find some sounds on here that I like. Cool. So once I know what I have on here, I might just try out playing a beat. Let's try some finger drumming. Cool, so I like that. Um, if this were Live 9, I would have to go back, turn my metronome on, tap in my tempo, and hit record to capture all that. But in Live 10, I can go straight up to the new capture button. And with one click, I now have a clip in my session view with all of that performance captured. We've figured out the meter and the tempo. We've even set the tempo in Ableton Live to follow the tempo of that performance. So if I turn the new metronome sounds on in Live 10, You can hear that now Live's metronome will follow your performance instead of you having to play to the click track. Uh, it makes it really easy to kind of capture the spontaneity and the unique rhythm you had in mind for your performance. So now that I have this, let me go ahead and bring in our brand new wavetable instrument. Now, we thought really hard about adding a new synth to Ableton Live, and part of the reason we chose Wavetable Synthesis is it's really flexible. You can create uh, very digital sounds, very analog-y sounds. You can create really warm, smooth sounds, really aggressive sounds. It's very diverse in the kind of palette you can create with it. But it's super flexible, and its uh, programming with Wavetable Synthesis is very similar to subtractive or analog synthesis. So if you've used any of those analog synths over the years, you're going to be really at home here in Wavetable. Table. So let's just try out a couple of the different sounds so you can get a little feel for the sort of content you can make here. Uh, let's go ahead and load up another sound. Let's go for a bass. I'm going to just expand this user interface up. This is Wavetable in its folded up, more compact view. But with one click, I can expand the entire user interface so that you can see all of the modulators, all of the oscillators, the modulators, the modulation matrix, all of the controls on screen at one time, and really dive into doing your own sound design and creating your own patch from scratch here. So I like the sound. I'm going to hit play on that beat. Maybe I'll use capture to capture a bass line along with the rhythm I already have. So if I like that, I'm going to capture it. This time, I'll capture right from push. I'm going to hold down record and press new. Cool. 
So let me go ahead and make that beat sound a little bigger so it can really live up to this big bass line we've created. I'm gonna come over to my browser and go back to my collections. I'm gonna grab drum bus and just add drum bus to this track. Now, drum bus is a simple device that's designed to make your drums uh, sound big, huge, and ready for release very, very quickly. It combines elements of wave shaping and saturation with compression. It's got a nice mid-range crunch to really bring out the tone of your snares. A transient shaper to let you make big, massive changes to the, the dynamics of your sound quickly. And this low frequency boom control will let you add a ton of bass. If you're listening to this on your computer speakers, this is a good time to plug in headphones. So let's just hear that before and after the drum bus. Here's that old beat before the processing. And now with drum bus, much bigger, ready to go. Now that I made those drums so big, it's a good time to go back to my bass. And let's go ahead and take pedal and use pedal to really add some, some dirt to the sound of our synthesizer. So pedal is a brand new effect that we've added to Live 10, and it's a component level model of several different analog distortion boxes. We've got a warm, crisp overdrive sound, we've got a modern, aggressive distortion, and we have sort of a broken 60s fuzz sound built in here. I'm gonna use the overdrive and just add some gain to this bass line, and use the sub button to make sure that I add a bunch of low end back into the sound that you might lose if you were running through a traditional guitar distortion box. Now the last thing I want to show off today is Echo. Echo is a new device that we've added to Live 10 that captures some of the best characteristics of a bunch of different delay devices over the years. It can sound a bit like an analog tape delay or a bucket brigade delay or a great sort of 80s digital hardware delay. Now, uh, it features this time tunnel visualization right in the center that will let you easily see how your delay time and your feedback settings affect the sound. Let's go ahead and send the drums over to Echo. Echo has an analog input phase that I can really distort if I want to add some, some more character and dirt to the sound. It has a feedback that goes way up to 150%. So if I want to create those out of control feedbacking delay sounds very fast to do that. And I can use the built-in analog filter models to really shape that feedback over time. I can also add certain amounts of old school character. I can add some wobble or some tape noise to that signal. Now the last thing I want to show off today is multi-clip MIDI editing. Now in Live 10, I can select multiple MIDI clips and I can see all of the performance information from both of those clips at the same time. So I'm just gonna hold down Shift and select both of these clips. And now down here in my clip view, I can see all of the notes of my bass line as well as all the notes in my drum, drum part at the same time. I can get in and start to edit these in context. I can move the notes of the bass line around so they line up with my kick drums. Or maybe I want to edit the notes of a lead line so that it lines up harmonically with the chords I've chosen for a pad. So these are just a few of the things that we've added to Live 10. Uh, we'll have way more info for you as the beta period progresses. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact your Sweetwater sales engineer.